and welcome to another video to get you through the English language exam. I'm going to release it tonight, the night before paper one. So let's just recap. What do you need for paper one? Number one, do not panic. You've already done this paper in the mocks. You've probably done it in year 10 as well. And you've tried out different methods. Well, I'm going to remind you of the methods. If you've done something different in the mocks and it worked, don't do what I'm going to recommend. But if it didn't work, then you need to really focus on what I'm going to tell you. So, top tip number one. This is a paper which lasts for one hour and 45 minutes. And the exam paper will say, spend 15 minutes reading. This is a very bad piece of advice. Number one, you can't remember what you read 15 minutes ago. And number two, you get no marks unless you write something. And number three, the exam used to be two and a quarter hours. The same exam. And they used to tell students then to spend 15 minutes. And you don't have the time now. It's only an hour and 45. So you get the extract. It's only one extract. It'll be about that long, just over a page of A4. Read it once, quickly, just to get a sense of what's going on. Then you can start answering the questions. Start with question five. Why? Because that's worth 50% of your whole marks. Yeah, 50% of your English exam is writing. And uh, why would you leave that till last when you're knackered and you've already thought, oh, do you know what? This, these questions on the reading paper, they were really hard. You're already deflated. Uh, so, top tip, start with question five. Now, you may be a student who's not going to get the top grades and having read the extract first will help you write something in question five. It will give you ideas, it will give you vocabulary. Um, but the great thing is, if you've done question five well at the beginning, that's already half of your marks. And you've already earned half the marks on the first question. That's really, really powerful for you psychologically. Okay, well, what next? Well, then you go to question four, which just asks you about an extract and an opinion about that whole sheet that you read. Well, what does the examiner want? It's very simple. The examiner just wants you to agree partly or mostly with a statement that they will have invented in order to help you. It's not important that you agree or disagree with that statement. There isn't a right answer in the examiner's head. They just give you this statement so that you can start writing without having to think too much. And they give you a statement because they want you to mostly agree and then partly disagree. Why do they want you to do that? Well, because it shows that you are evaluating. So you're going to mostly agree with the statement, whatever it is. You know, this uh, writer is trying to be mysterious. This writer is trying to build tension. This writer is trying to get inside the minds of the characters. Yada, 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 yada. Whatever it is. Yeah, 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 I agree. But there'll be a flaw in it. You know, something where they're not doing it right. And I'm just going to find something in that extract that they give me to say that I don't fully agree. Okay. Uh, the other thing that you must do is talk about the methods that the writer uses. And methods just means language features. And you will have been taught all sorts of different ways of remembering those language features. And you've learned them since you were probably that high, so high you can't even fit in the video. Um, similes, metaphor, alliteration, or you might have been taught other persuasive techniques. Whatever, it doesn't matter. The examiner hasn't got a secret list of techniques that you have to write about. It's just anything that you spot. Now, that is a 20 mark question and therefore you need to keep writing for about 25 minutes, 24 minutes. You just need to keep writing. Why is that the best advice? Why is it so cool to just keep writing? Because you will find a lazy person next to you who is not writing and therefore they will get lower marks than you and you will get higher marks. If you've watched some of my videos lately, you'll see students, um, particularly in question four, who reach the end of what they thought and they obviously then thought, oh well, I'll just keep writing. And then they got extra marks even though what they wrote wasn't as good as what went before. But who cares? You still made extra points, you get extra marks. Okay, so mostly agree, uh, have ways of disagreeing, 
find lots of evidence and name the techniques. Uh, simple as that. Right, question three. Question three is the structure question. And uh, structure is something that's relatively new to English teaching. Um, it's not a way that um, teachers have been teaching for the last 20 years. Um, and so this is a question that students often struggle with. Well, it's only worth eight marks, so don't panic. But the examiners are after some really, really simple things. So they want to know why this happens here and not here. Uh, well, the answer is nearly always to do with contrast. Nearly always. You will, if you just take one word into question three, it's contrast. There will always be a contrast between rich and poor, between male and female, between kind and nasty. There will always be between inside and outside. You will always find contrasts and you will always be able to say the author has done that deliberately and you get the marks for explaining what the effect of that is, how that controls the reader, how that makes the reader think this, how it makes the reader imagine that, how it makes them feel the other. That sounds a bit dodgy, doesn't it? Okay, but if you remember that as fit, feel, imagine, think, see what I did there? Fit, oh, I'm so good. Right, fit, feel, imagine, think. If you just say why the change of focus makes us feel or imagine or think something, you will get the marks. And what else is so cool about this question is that there is a way that you will always know the um, writer is changing focus. What is that? Well, they just start a new paragraph. Here's one paragraph, here's another. Change of focus, everyone. Here's another paragraph. Why is that? Because it's a change of focus. So you'll always be able to talk about that. Um, the best answers will look at the beginning and the end and say how they've changed. And uh, that will be why you've changed the focus from what you had at the beginning to what you have at the end. Um, the examiners may well choose um, an extract which they hope is a bit circular. So the ending refers back to the beginning in some way. Um, so I don't know, you might have some a character with luxurious hair at the beginning and by the end they're bald, you know. I don't know why I thought of that. Uh, but there will always be some sort of shift towards the end that refers back to the beginning. Uh, if you spot that, you'll be in the top 10% of students in the universe. Okay, question two. Question two is a language feature question. Um, really easy to do, full of techniques again, soap aims whatever it is that you've learnt. Um, students do really well on this. It's only eight marks again. And again, you always have to talk about the methods and the effect on the reader. Um, eight marks, that means you've got probably 10 minutes to do the question in. Um, well, what's gonna make the difference between you and the person next to you? Well, the person next to you is gonna sit there thinking for two minutes or annotating the text. Like, why would you do that? It's right in front of you. It's like you only have to annotate it if you're going to forget it between the time you've seen it and the time you write it down. No, people who annotate it are scared of the exam. And so they're spending time being busy, 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 but getting no marks. Don't annotate the text. That's a waste of time. Look at it. Find something. The moment you find something, I'm writing about that. Now, there are key things which will always be there. You will always find a simile or a metaphor or a personification. If you don't find one of those three, then it's been written by a monkey. And it won't have been written by a monkey, it'll be written by a writer. And they always use personification or metaphor or simile. That will be there somewhere. You will always find some alliteration there for a reason. You will always find contrast, because that's how writers write. Now... Oh, Mr. Sally's contrast, it's a structure technique, don't blow my mind. No, they will have achieved contrast through language, won't they? Here they're describing using the yellow red in order to contrast it with the colour white. Red signifying danger, white signifying peace or cowardice or whatever, whatever. Yeah, that will always be there for a reason. And so you will always be able to write about that contrast uh, as a language technique. Um, that will always be present in what you're reading. So, And then finally we get to question one. Question one is worth only four marks. It's um, designed for everyone in the country to be able to answer. The average mark for this um, 
question is 3.5 marks. Yeah, so even students who can barely read are still going to get at least three marks. Um, and that's why I'm suggesting you do it last, because even if you have one minute left at the end of the exam, you probably still get all four marks. Um, so do it last. OK, well, let's imagine you've got to the end of the exam this way and there is still some time left. What do you do? Go back to question five. Did you start every sentence in a different way? Did you include more than commas and full stops? Have you got any sentences which have got like four commas in? Right, I'm going to reread that and check that all those commas are right, should any of them be full stops. Have you got some brackets in there? I know it's childish, like why would the examiner need a range of punctuation? But they do, so you can just put it in. Does your ending work? Do you need to tweak that ending? Uh, let's have a look and see. Are there any words that you know you've spelt wrongly? Uh, well, just have another stab at them. Um, one line, cross out, and then write the new spelling. Does the examiner mind if you change words and cross one thing out and write something new because you've thought of a better word or a better idea? No, in fact, the examiner is probably going to give you more marks because they see you are a writer, someone who crafts what they're writing. Oh, look, I didn't think that was so good. Uh, I'll put in something better. Uh, so that's a top way to improve your marks at the end of the exam. If you get to the end of the exam and you are not still trying to improve it, then you've basically said, don't give me all those marks, I'm not really too bothered. Come on, you're in there for an hour and 45 minutes, that's all. Use every single minute. Don't ever get to the stage where you think, I've finished, and then just chill out. Because you'll be chilling out pretty quickly, but with extra marks compared to everyone else. So, I hope that has left you ready to demolish this exam. Keep writing. Uh, Keep enjoying it. This is a brilliant paper for you to enjoy because you can start with question five and be as creative as you like. And uh, good luck. See you on the other side.